Hi, I'm Margaret Milutinovic from Financial Goddess and today I'm chatting with my daughter Jasmine in relation to uh, career choices as it relates to the financial empowerment of women. It is a big challenge in today's society for the kids to figure out amongst all the options what the possibilities are and more so to learn to understand what it takes to achieve their goals. In this series of Jasmine's financial empowerment journey, we're going to discover what steps has my daughter Jasmine uh, taken, as well as allow you to follow her journey. All right, so Jasmine, last time we were having this catch up with our viewers, you just landed your very first job at McDonald's. How exciting was that? It was pretty exciting, honestly. I like. I was happy that after applying for so many jobs and not getting a response back that I did end up getting a job somewhere. And how is your training with McDonald's? They provide really good training and like there's about four or five different training shifts that you get so you get to learn a lot of different new skills. Okay. And how much money were you earning an hour? when you started with them? It was about $8.50 an hour. Yeah, okay. And how many hours a week were you getting on average when you were working with them? On average, it was between three to six hours a week. Mm -hmm. And then there was the occasional like nine hours I would get. Okay. And so what was your favorite things about working for McDonald's? I really liked the work environment. A lot of the staff members and my co-workers, they were really nice. Mm -hmm. There were some things within my job that I liked to do, like I liked to do drive through. Mm -hmm. I just found it really fun. And then making cup trays was also amazing. Um, the food, cooking the food, I don't know. I just liked making the food at McDonald's. Okay, sure. And what were the things that you didn't like about McDonald's, if any? Um, I didn't really like the hours I was getting. Like, sometimes it just seemed a bit too short for me. Mm -hmm. um, and taking the bins out, you know, having to take the bins out and then I can't put a sign on the bin to tell people not to chuck the rubbish in. And so, how long were you working with McDonald's before you made a decision that it's time to look for another opportunity? I was working for McDonald's for about just over a year before I decided that I wasn't reaching my goal fast enough in terms of making the money that I needed to, so I decided it was time to look for a new employment place. And at that point in time, where did you end up getting a job? I ended up getting a job at Domino's. So that was very pretty good. good. Pizza, we all love pizza. Yeah, I love pizza so much. And what kind of tasks were you doing there? At first, it was just putting the sauce on the pizza and basic serving, taking people's orders. Mm -hmm. And then after a few weeks, it got to me actually learning how to make the different types of pizzas. And then a little bit after that, I managed to make some garlic scrolls. So that was pretty interesting. Yeah, excellent. And I had the opportunity to taste some of your pizzas and garlic bread. It was pretty <laughs> awesome. Well done. And what about in terms of pay? How much were you getting paid an hour working at Domino's with one year experience already from McDonald's? I was getting paid about $9.70 an hour. Yeah, so you get about a pay rise of about $1.20. Yeah. by moving from McDonald's to Domino's, which is, which is not too bad for, for 12 months. And what were your favorite parts about working for Domino's? I liked making the pizzas. Yeah. It was always like, it, it was fun making the pizzas because there were so many different types. And then I also liked handing out the pizzas as well. Some people have a nice day, you know. <laughs> And was there anything that you kind of didn't like in your job or that was unexpected? Not really. There was nothing that I didn't like other, other than, when I think about it, there was only one thing. Mm. And it like, again, it was that hours because it, 
I asked them for a certain amount of hours and they said they would give me those hours but then they didn't mm. like it was just the same and I didn't like that because the reason I changed jobs was for the hours so I could reach my goal and I think from the conversations that we had actually when Jasmine has applied for Domino's during the job interview she has advised them upon an advice for me to let them know that the reason she's looking for a change of employment from McDonald's is to gain more hours on average uh, the hours that she was getting from McDonald's was, was it six a week on average yeah <clears throat> and if you recall our previous uh, episode when we filmed it, we needed Jasmine to work a minimum of seven hours a week and legally she is able to work up to 11. So our expectation was that Jasmine will be able to maximize her potential and work 11 hours um, most of the weeks. So when she first started, Domino's offered her nine hours a week. So we're pretty happy yeah. because there was already three hours more a week uh, than what was happening with McDonald's. But then a number of issues came up. So the first one was that most of the shifts were at night during the week, so on school nights. And there were times where Jasmine wouldn't finish until 9 p.m. Uh, there was no safe modes of transport, so she had to rely on us being able to give her a, a lift, which... Um, with having a, a young baby at home that is already in bed wasn't possible so it was a little bit of a juggle around that and also when she started with the nine hours originally the boss told you that once you're fully trained up they're going to start giving you more hours yes but that actually never happened not even on school holidays where she was allowed to work 38 hours a week and we're hoping she's going to pick up more hours that still didn't happen and actually in effect the boss has gone ahead and started hiring more people. So the initial nine hours that you were doing during training ended up being three to six hours a week again. So at that point in time, we had a conversation and we sat down and read the budget. And once again, you're in the same situation, back to square one, where you're not actually hitting the goal of being able to save up that four to six thousand dollars to be able to go to the college yeah. so what did you decide to do then i decided to look for another job and so i applied until i got back from that salad shop that's right that was your next opportunity i remember it was the long school holidays yeah it was and we went everywhere i went with jasmine with with your resume and I just said, just go to every shop, even if it's not displayed, that they hiring. At that point in time, you had, what, about a year and a half of work experience, something like that? Just over a year, still, like a couple months. Yeah, so, so Jasmine had that ideal range where employers are kind of looking for one to two years. So we felt that at this point in time, it should be easier for her to secure a job. And from our... Um, a learning curve with McDonald's and Domino's I have asked Jasmine to only apply for jobs that are on the weekends because we have realized that any shifts that are directly after school it's not quite feasible and if they finish too late at night on the school night it's also not feasible uh, she was studying year 10 and we didn't want the um, uh, her employment to interfere with her year 10 studies still felt that her focusing on her grades should be number one priority. So Jasmine was looking for employment that would predominantly be uh, weekends work and school holidays. And everywhere that you left resume, you made it very clear that your availability will be weekends and school holidays, wasn't it? Yes. And so at that point in time, what did that salad bar tell you when you applied for a job and told them that you can only do weekends and school holidays? They were okay with it. They were fine with not doing during the school days because they did end up closing the shop early as well. So that worked really well. And at that point in time, what was your hourly rate? I think it was $14. Something, I think it was like 12. Oh, 12, maybe, yeah. It was about 12.50, yeah, 12.50 an hour. But that job we actually liked because 
it suited us well. It was regular hours, which wasn't happening at McDonald's. The shifts in McDonald's were all over the place. Jasmine could have starting time at 6 a.m. She could have finishing time at 11 p.m. It, it was very hard in, in sort of family environment to have that level of flexibility with me running multiple uh, businesses and being heavily involved in community and having other children being responsible for it not having a steady schedule from mcdonald's and trying to find three or six hours you know halfway through the day uh, was very tricky so one of the things that i personally really enjoyed about your job at that salad bar was the fact that there was stable hours we knew saturday we knew sunday i could organize my expectations around it and it worked um, quite well and then what what happened that led to you ending that employment? Tell us a little bit more. So I was working and at the end of the shift, the customer's cloud declined, but I hadn't seen that it didn't go through and they were rushing me to go home. So I just took the receipt and I put it in the till and I left to go home. And then I received a text that afternoon from my boss saying that she was going to unemploy me because I let a customer go away with about $45 worth of food. Yeah. And so to give you a little bit more context, um, when Jasmine started working at that salad bar, she had previous experience from both McDonald's and Domino's in handling the cash register. However, the cash register that that salad bar had was very different screen and very different um, layout. She, how long did you end up working there for? I think it was about two months, two to three months. So Jasmine was there for only a short period of time. She did show up Saturday and Sunday. Um, originally the boss was very happy because Jasmine was available even at the time that other um, kids were canceling last minute, didn't show up to work or things like that. Jasmine was always available. I've instilled those ethics uh, in her. But unfortunately, at the point in time that her boss let her go, it was a second instance where it happened that the customer would order a food, they would tap their F post card, but the payment wouldn't have gone through. Jasmine's mistake, your mistake, was not looking on the screen and making sure that the green tick comes off and that the payment has gone through, which I can understand it from both perspectives, from a small business owner who is paying you wages to be there and has the expense of um, producing the food for the customer. That's a double loss for them because they're paying for your time and for the product. And at the same time, I felt very um, empathetic towards you because of course, it's you've got a young girl who, yeah, she's, she's 15 years old, she is learning on the job, she's trusting that if somebody's tapping with the machine, of course, that they're going to pay for the product. And when you're in a rush and trying to serve customers and that customer came just before closing time, you're trying to do everything, you know, these things can happen. It is an innocent mistake. We also have offered to reimburse the boss. So we've actually made an offer that in return for Jasmine being able to return to work and be given another chance, we have offered the boss to just deduct it out of Jasmine's wages because we both, after having a discussion, we both felt that it was a great employment opportunity, mistakes happen, and even though it was the second time it happened, you'll make sure it doesn't happen for a third time. Unfortunately, um, the boss didn't take us up on that offer. They did not deduct the payment from Jasmine and they did not give her the opportunity to come back and to learn from her mistakes. And as such, Jasmine has gone back to the drawing board and updated her resume and started her job search. And tell us about how that job search went. How many jobs did you apply for before securing that next opportunity? So after I updated my resume, I printed them out and I decided to head to Palm Cove and I applied for around 15 local businesses in Palm Cove before I ended up securing the job at Pete's Place, 
where they asked me immediately if I could do an hour trial shift. At the end of that hour, they asked me if I liked it there. I said I did, and then we started my employment from there. Fantastic. And so Pete's place is only um, a, a short distance from where we live and it is available by public transport as well. There's a very well designed public transport. They have offered you stable hours. So we know effectively every Saturday and every Sunday there are set hours that Jasmine works. They don't really change from week to week. So it makes it a lot easier for us as a family to plan activities uh, around it. And on school holidays, they've given you more shifts as well. So tell us a bit more as to what tasks are you doing at Pitt's Place? So I work as an all-rounder, mm -hmm. meaning I'm able to do service, handle food, mm -hmm. do dishes. I also, when people come and eat inside, instead of doing takeaway, I, do, I take their plates out to them. I make different drinks, I serve ice cream. When it's really quiet, I end up getting some time in the kitchen and I make some of the food there as well. I do a lot of cleaning, I do some dishes. I also do stocking out back and in the store because it's not only a takeout shop, but it's also a convenience store. So the stuff in the convenience store does need to be stocked up sometimes. Okay. And how much are you getting paid an hour? During the week, when it's holidays, I work... I get paid fourteen fifty one an hour, mm -hmm. and then on weekends my rate is seventeen fifty one an hour. So, when Jasmine started, when you only started about eighteen months ago, in your very first job in McDonald's with no experience whatsoever, she has started on eight dollars fifty an hour. If she would have made the decision to stay in McDonald's her pay would not have gone up that much. It would have just increased slightly by 15, 20 cents an hour based on the age. Um, however, because she's taken the risks and expanded, because you've expanded your horizons, you've built up this experience that got recognized and now effectively you're making 14, 15 hours. So it's $6 more an hour that you were making 18 months ago. And in addition, you're actually able to work a lot more hours. You're averaging about 11 hours a week, which is the maximum that you can do during school term. And on school holidays, you've been averaging 30, 35 hours a week, which again, the maximum for a school age child is uh, 38. So that's great. And what are your favorite things about um, Pete's Place? Like any other workplace I've worked in, I've loved making the food. It's been like, it's a lot more fun. I like stocking the shelves. The shelves, um, they have these little lights in them and it looks really cool. So when I stock them up, uh, it's nice. The customers are a lot more friendly, friendlier. So I don't, um, I don't mind serving customers all the time. And the co-workers are really friendly. They're really nice and everyone just gets along. It's a very nice work environment. So it sounds like that's your winner to help you reach your goal for Demi International. Yeah. So it sounds like you're going to be sticking around there for a while. Definitely. With how many hours I'm getting and the pay rate, which has gone up immensely compared to what I was getting 18 months ago, it's definitely the winner. And it's definitely going to get me closer to my goal as I need it. Well, I'm very happy with your progress. Thanks for sharing that update with our viewers. And in our next episode, we are going to drill down and analyze in more details the financial journey uh, for Jasmine. We're going to break down the goals and we'll also let you know how she's tracking with her financial savings. So <laughs> stay tuned. Thanks for watching.